So Mauritius, why did you choose political science? So I choose political science because I'm really passionate about humanity. And I really wish to bring a change in my society. And through politics, I would be able to bring innovative ideas, policies for the betterment of the people. And in addition, I believe that we need more women in parliament to bring positive change and to bring a difference. Because women are able to do great things, even with less. In addition, however, the Miss World platform is a very great beginning for such future political career. Because Miss World work for humanitarian causes and using beauty with purpose is very wonderful. It is very significant to me as well, as I believe that a degree in political science is really not enough to serve other people. So I am here in this edition of Miss World, not only to represent my people and my country, but also to learn from the Miss World organization, from the girls, how I can really bring a change in my republic and why not the global world. So I reached so far in life as well because many people have been helping me. So it's a beautiful way for me to use political science and the Miss World contest to really be grateful and to give back to the world what has been given to me. Thank you, Frankie. Mauritius, what is the best quality a parent can share with their child? Personally, I think that the best quality a parent can share with their child is the capacity of self-determination. Unfortunately, I did not grow up with my father, and at a very young age, I lost my mum. And after the death of my mum, I, I was left with questions like what I'm going to do, where I'm going to be, and how my life was going to change. And at this very moment in my life, I realized that if I was able to ask myself this question, this means that I've got this self-determination. So I believe that this is what really saved me and allowed me to be the best version of myself. My parent gave me this capacity, this quality by leading me. So however, I believe that self-determination will help children around the world to set goals, principles in life for a better future and allow them to overcome any struggles in life, any hardships, no matter if their parents are here or not. Thank you. Thank you, Mauritius. Now, France, in your video, you said that Miss World is not just a beauty contest. What did you mean by this? Je veux dire par là que ce n'est pas juste un concours de beauté. C'est un concours qui a un but, et c'est pour ça que j'ai choisi de faire Miss Monde, puisque je suis très engagée depuis des années maintenant pour la sensibilisation du cancer du sein, puisque ma mère est une survivante du cancer du sein. Elle en a eu un il y a quelques années maintenant. Et en tant que Miss France, j'ai eu la chance de pouvoir participer à divers événements pour prendre la parole et notamment récolter des fonds. C'est pour ça que j'ai envie maintenant de le faire à un niveau international. Et ça serait fantastique de pouvoir le faire grâce à Miss Monde. Thank you, France. France, how would you convince others to help their communities? Eh bien, je pense que je leur conseillerais de se comporter avec la communauté comme si c'était leur famille, leur femme, leur sœur ou bien même leurs voisins, puisqu'en se comportant comme ça, on a beaucoup plus de compassion envers les autres. Et je pense qu'aujourd'hui, c'est très important d'être compatif envers les autres personnes. Par exemple, on a beaucoup de, de gens démunis dans la rue. Et je pense que si une communauté d'un petit village se rassemblait et les aider, par exemple, pour les accueillir dans des centres d'accueil, on pourrait les aider, par exemple, à voilà, ne pas se retrouver seul dans le froid, euh, sans abri, sans manger en hiver. Et on pourrait faire évoluer les choses en leur proposant d'accueillir accepter leurs animaux puisque beaucoup de gens démunis refusent d'aller dans des centres d'accueil puisque les animaux ne sont pas acceptés. Voilà, je pense qu'il faut surtout ne pas oublier que chaque personne compte. Tell us more about what it means to come from a township and a bit about that journey. Townships in South Africa are normally characterized by high rates of unemployment, um, teenage pregnancy and crime. And because of this background, um, a lot of people feel that there are limitations to their dreams and what they can achieve. And they feel that some things are out of their reach. But growing up, I never had limitations because my parents taught me that I should never be a victim of my circumstances. And um, that is because we believed in the power of education and we believed that, you know, education is a sustainable vehicle that can, you know, better your life. So I rose above my circumstances through education and, you know, being from a township actually instilled a lot of um, incredible work ethic in me and it shaped me into the person that I am today, which is why it's very important for me to be at Miss World and to represent my country on a global platform. You know, it gives hope to those people that have a similar circumstance um, and similar background to mine. And it allows them to see an example 
um, of what education and self-development can do for a person. And most importantly, it just allows them to rise above their own circumstances, to chase their dreams and to change the trajectory of their lives. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest thing that separates you from the other contestants? I grew up in the new democratic South Africa, full of opportunities. And now I have the ability to work hard and go after my dreams and create my own destiny. But that was not the case for my parents. And I understand that not everyone has access to these opportunities. So I don't take anything for granted. So I believe that everything that I've been through has, you know, led me to this point and it has you know, strengthened my passion to serve and it has led me to this journey. Yes. Thank you, South Africa. Thank you. Philippines, tell us some more about your love for your grandparents. My grandparents are my heart. They're my, they are my world. I've been living with them for the past few years. These are my paternal grandparents and they're very eccentric people, so they've been married for over 50 years, but they're the only couple I've ever seen fight while holding hands at the same time. They cannot stand each other, but you know, like my grandfather, if he's holding a chair open for my grandmother, he'll pinch her butt as she sits down. They're really funny. <laughs> and they're people of this world. They've lived such full lives, maybe like enough for th to fill three lifetimes. Um, but we have a very great bond, my grandparents and I, and um, you know, one thing when you do pageants, you sacrifice a lot of stuff, like whether it be time with your friends or, you know, going to parties, going out, maybe it might be education. So I think the thing that affects me most is that I have to sacrifice my time spending with them. Um, every day they teach me so much and they're so supportive of me, but about a few months ago my grandfather had a stroke, he had a mild stroke, and that's when I realized how short life is. And um, I do get emotional about it because he's such a strong man. And up until a few years ago, he would run with me. We'd go jogging on the treadmill outside. And when he had his stroke, I thought, OK, there's a time that I have to spend with them. And at 26 years old, this is my peak in life and my, my career. So it's, do I spend time with my grandparents or do I excel um, in what I'm doing? And I know he wants me to excel in what I'm doing. So. Um, I love him that much that he tells me, you know, go do what you want to do, regardless if I want to eat chocolates with him or play chess with him. And I'm lactose intolerant, but he likes eating chocolates with me <laughs> and ice cream, so I do that with him. And finally, we have Philippines. What would you tell the world about Sanya? Sanya, beautiful city, beautiful people. Um, I would definitely have to share that this is the first time, and I've been to many places in the world, that I've wanted to name my daughter after a city. So I'm Katerina Sonia, S-O-N-J-A, and then we have Sonia. And the reason why is because it's the first time that I've met uh, people who are so curious, who are so interested in what's going on. They're very kind people, they're very... They, they want to know what's happening, like who are these girls, what's going on. And it's also the first time that I've been to a tropical place where I can wear a pantsuit. So it's very diverse. Um, you know, you have the malls and then you have the beach. And I look out my window from the hotel and I see the linings of the mountain and the sun rising and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And I thought, you know, there's just so much here where it's not just the tropics. It's not. Um, just the city. It's not what you would think China to be like. It's my first time to be in China and I feel like there's a lot to explore. So I've already had this type of connection to the people and to, to the city and they say that Sanya is the Hawaii of China. So I would like to share with the world that Sanya is actually not the uh, Hawaii of China but the Sanya of the world. <laughs> Thank you so much Philippines. Jamaica, tell us more about being a country girl. I think being a country girl is the best experience. It's almost like growing up in one big yard. There are literally no fences or gates separating the houses, so you can just walk from your house to a neighbor's house, have dinner, have lunch. Everyone, everyone is a big family. So everyone plays a role in, in um, nurturing you. So as a kid, you have to be careful about what you do because anyone can discipline you or report to your parents. And I live in a farming community, so most of the individuals there are farmers. So most of the things that we eat are fresh. My mom has a small farm, and when it's dinner time and she wants something, she just goes out and plucks it out, and then we bring it to the kitchen and we cook it and we eat it. So 
in the country it's just a simple life and I think it has really made me very humble because everyone is so grateful for what they have and it's just a very simple and clean life and I love it. And then what's the transition like from farm girl to Miss World? <laughs> I, I have just brought everything with me, I think. I think I miss world because I am a farm girl and because of what they have taught me and everything that I bring with me from them. Great. Jamaica, tell us about the greatest obstacle you've had to overcome in your life and what you learned from it. The greatest obstacle that I've had to overcome was one with myself. It was really building my self-confidence. As a child, people tend to throw their opinions at you. And I latched onto those opinions and I used them to define who I was. And that really kept me back from a lot of things, trying new things and trying just to find myself. And now that I have found myself, it's a freeing feeling to know who you are. And that way you're just not boxed in anymore. And I am so grateful that I eventually did because there are many people who are still searching. And I'm just so happy that I have found who I am and I can be confident in my genuine self.